Hi. Hi. How are you? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking, man. We are starting the roundish chapter of the year. Nothing, really? Okay, I got a grin. <laughs> I'll take my grin. And the snicker. I saw the snicker. We're going to be talking about circles, which is why it's the roundest chapter of them. <laughs> You're shaking your head. That means I did it right. All right. Today is the 26th of February. This is my eighth period class. A circle is the set of all points that are equidistant from some other point. We're going to call that point the center of the circle. And I want to make sure that we all know what the word equidistant means. What does equidistant mean? Yeah, distance is equal. So these are all the points that the distance is equal to some point that I said was the center. Good. We have three special segments in a circle. You know two of them, I suspect, and the third one might be new. So we're going to start with one of the ones that I think you guys know, and that is the radius. The radius of the circle is a segment and its endpoints are at the center of the circle and on the circle. <coughs> Thank you. So if I look at my circle, the center is C, a point on the circle is F, and so the segment CF is a radius. I'll have to be later. So this is a radius. No. Okay. Thank you. The segment you may not be familiar with is this next one. Its name is written C H O R D, but because English is weird, this word is pronounced chord. The CH is making a k sound and not a ch sound that you might be more familiar with. Okay? So this word is pronounced chord. And a chord is a segment in a circle where the endpoints are on the circle. No particular place else that it goes through, just that it's somewhere on the circle. A is on the circle, B is on the circle, and so the line segment AB is a chord. Other chords that appear in this circle would be if I were to draw a line from, say, B to D, that would be another chord because B is on the circle and D is on the circle. I could draw another chord from A to E or from B to E or B to F. As long as I start and stop on the circle, everyone's happy with it being a chord, which means that D, E is also a chord. Except DE goes to the center. Do you see it? And when it goes to the center, not only is it a chord, it's also a diameter. And this is probably the other segment in a circle that you were familiar with. A diameter is just a chord, starts and stops on the circle, but it has to go through the center. Diameters are made up of things called collinear radii. Oh, that's fun words. What did collinear mean again? Do you remember? He's drawing a, like a line with his hands. Yeah, it's things that are on the same line. 
Okay, so I'm going to jot this down over here in a different color. Collinear means on the same line. Radii just means more than one radius. One radius, two radii. And notice my diameter is made up of two radii. It's made up of CD and CE in this case. For any circle that has some radius, which we'll call R, because I don't know what the measure is, and some diameter, which we'll call D, again, I don't know the measure of it, the following three equations are always true. And we get to use these anytime we want, depending on what we need. The radius is equal to the measure of the diameter divided by 2. The radius is equal to half of the diameter, so the diameter times 1 half. That's the same as divide by 2. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, something in my throat. And diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. All three of those things mean the same thing. It means that I physically need two radii to make one diameter. Let's practice doing some things with circles, including using one of those three formulas that we just <laughs> talked about. First off, let's name this circle. To name a circle, you're going to grab the center, and you're going to write the name of the center. What's the center of this circle? R. That's the point that's very clearly defined, and it's somewhere inside of the circle. So we're going to write the capital letter R for the point R at the center. And then we're going to write a circle in front of it, but I don't want to write the word circle. Do you want to write the word circle? Yeah, I don't either. It's too big of a word. So we're going to use the symbol for circle. Here's the symbol. Literally, it's a circle. You put a dot in the middle. That's the symbol for circle. So now when you're taking notes in your, I don't know, like history class, and they talk about putting things in a circle, and you have to, instead of writing the word circle, you just write that symbol. And people are going to be like, what? You're like, look, I'm in geometry. I know what I'm talking about. Let's name all the radii that we can. Remember that a radius goes from the center to somewhere on the circle. Looking at this figure, give me a segment that goes from the center to somewhere on the circle. Okay, but I need two points for R to A. This is the name of a physical segment. Please put the bar over the name of the physical segment. When you put that bar, it's like calling me Garanza, right? You call me by my name. If you forget the bar, it would be like calling me five foot. Because that's how long I am. I'm five feet long. Well, tall, but, right? We're going to say I'm, that's how long I am, head to toe. Okay? So, have to put the bar for the name. Otherwise, you're calling it by its measurement. Okay. What are some of the other radii? Because we want all of them. R what? R to X. Yep, that's one of them. Another one? RY is another one. Yep. And RB. Very nice. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> We're going to name the chords. Please remember that chords go from starting on the circle to stopping on the circle. Okay? So as long as we're on the circle and on the circle, we have a chord. Hmm. Can we find some segments that start and stop on the circle? Yes. AX. Yes. Notice it starts here at A and it ends here at X. 
Good. Another one? Y B. Okay. There are more. X Y. Notice that X Y also goes to the center. We'll deal with that in a second. But it is a chord because it starts and stops on the circle. Other chords? A B. Okay. There are chords that are not drawn. Can you find the chords not drawn? A to Y. I could grab my straight edge and I could draw a line from point A to point Y. That's a chord. So I'm going to name that one. Is there another chord? XB. XB. The other one that's not drawn. Good. Now we're going to name the diameters. Remember that the diameters are chords, but they have to go through the center. So which were the two chords that went through the center? AY went through the center? AX? Oh, XY, okay. Sorry, I was confused. That's okay, that's okay. Which other one is the diameter? A, B. Very good. Perfect. Number two. If R, Y is 10 inches, find A, R, and A, B. That was a lot of letters. I've already got confused. So I'm going to back up. If R, Y is 10 inches, stop. What kind of line segment is R, Y? It's a radius. Okay, good. So this is a radius. Because a circle is all the points equidistant, same distance, from some center point, all of the line segments that go center of circle to circle, they're all the same size. All the radii have the same measure. What kind of segment is AR? It's a radius. All the radii have the same measure. So if one radius is 10, then the other radius is? Is 10. All the radii are the same. If one radius is 10, the other radius is 10. And notice now that I wrote the name without the bar. Because now I'm talking about its measure, not naming the physical thing. What kind of segment is AB? According to my notes up here, one diameter is the same as two radii. So if the radius is 10, then two of them are? Oh, yeah, inches, yes, thank you. I was given a unit of measure. I should include that. Thank you. Easy enough? Let's talk, ladies, about what happens when we get pairs of circles. Okay? Two circles are congruent. Same size, same shape. If they have congruent radii, that means that this radius is the same measure as this radius. They're all the same shape, they're all circles. And if they have the same radius measure, then they're all the same size as each other. They're congruent. All circles, no matter where they live, all those circles are going to be similar. Meaning they're all the same shape, but they're likely all different sizes. This symbol, this thing, looks like the logo to one of my favorite stores. Yeah, Target. But we can call these by the geometric title. These circles are called concentric circles. 
That's an R. T R I C. Concentric. Maybe next time you won't mess with the furniture. I'm just saying. It's okay. I'm not mad. Concentric circles are circles that are different sizes, but the centers are all in the same location. That's the bullseye of your target. Okay? When you're ready, join me on the next page. Because now you can confuse mom and be like, Mom, can we go to the concentric circle store? <laughs> yeah, I do that to my husband. You want to know his response? Really? Just call it Target. I'm like, but, oh, okay. Distance around the circle. What do we call that? Circumference. It's circumference. Spelled C-I-R-C-U-M-F-E-R-E-N-C. Look, it's right there. <laughs> the circumference of the circle has two different formula that you could use, depending on whether you have or want radius or diameter. Here's the first or one of the formulas. That's pi. It's delicious. It's also a number that goes on for forever. And a lot of you have memorized as 3.14. You will get to use that wonderful knowledge here in a little bit. But I want you to get comfortable writing the symbol. Ignore that. That's a squiggle. All right, we want to find the diameter and the radius given some, 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 eh, given some circumference. We're going to round to the nearest hundred, so we're going to get a mas o menos, good enough answer. And we're going to find the exact value. The difference between the two. The nearest hundredth is rounded. It's not exact. The exact value will have the symbol pi still in the answer. Because, ladies, when you take pi and you replace it 3.14, you've cut off a whole bunch of numbers from pi. Okay? So I want you to be comfortable doing both. Let's do number three. All right, I want the diameter and the radius, so I'm going to use both formula to do this. Formulas? Formulae? I don't know the correct way to pluralize formula. Maybe someone in my comment section can help me find the plural for formula. All right, I'm going to do the diameter one first. My circumference is 40. So I'm replacing the capital C that is a capital uppercase C. I'm going to replace it with 40. Now that symbol pi, I'm going for the exact value right now. That symbol pi represents a number. Okay? In this case, 3.14. But it, since it's a number, anything I can do to a number, I can do to pi. So I can add it, I can subtract it, I can multiply it, and more importantly, I can divide by it. What's happening to pi in the diameter right now? Right here, what's happening to it? It's multiplying, because I don't see a symbol, so it's multiplying. It's multiplying. How do you want to do multiplication? Division. Division. I want the diameter by itself, so what should I divide by? Pi. pi. I'm not replacing pi with 3.14, not yet because I want the exact number. Those two pies cancel. Very sad. What a waste of pie. And the diameter exactly is whatever you get when you take 40 and divide it by pi. Whatever that number is. Now let's get the approximate answer. So the diameter is approximately, más o menos, sort of, kind of, is about. Now you go into your calculators, your favorite 
whether it's your calculator app on your phone or whether it's one of the TI Inspires that we have in the room for you, go into your calculators and type in 40 divided by and then put whatever your favorite number is for pi. Are you using 3.14? Are you using 3.14159? Or does your calculator app have a pi button that you're pushing? What's your, what are, what are you using for pi? 3.14? Okay. Okay, because yours doesn't have a pi button. So he would write on his paper pi equals 3.14, and that tells me that he's using that number, and his answer might be different than yours if yours has a pi button on your calculator, which it does? Okay, so what you would write, ma'am, on your paper, since you're using the button, you would write pi equals button, <laughs> which tells me that you push the button. And this 3.14 tells me that he typed in the numbers 3.14, okay? I suspect you two will have different numbers as your answer. And that's okay, because you're using slightly different numbers for pi. All right, what, I'm gonna go with yours, sir. Tell me what your value for the diameter is. Round to the nearest hundredth, two decimal places. 12 point, but I need two decimal places. Seven, seven, seven three. Okay, 12.73. Yours may or may not be the same. It's not the same. Okay, and that's okay. Is it close enough? Okay. Which is fine. So again, as long as you tell me which one of these two you use, you're still right. Good. Now let's get the radius. It's probably off by a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Circumference in radius. My circumference is 40. And now I'm going to solve that one for the radius. How do I get the radius by itself? Well, what's near it? The 2 pi that I want to get rid of. What is happening between the 2 pi and the radius? Multiplication. multiplication. So how do I undo multiplication? And what am I dividing by? Beautiful. The two pies here on the right cancel, leaving me with just the radius. Now on the left, I have 40 divided by 2. 40 divided by 2 is 20. That number is going to be on the top, bless you. And I'm going to divide 2 by 2, which is 1. So now here on the left, I have 20 divided by pi. And so the exact value for the radius is whatever you get when you take 20 and you divide it by the entire number of pi. I'm just going to leave it as the symbol because I don't want to be here forever writing numbers. That and I don't know very many of them. All right, let's get the mas o menos about answer. Let's use yours. So pi equals button. So give me the mas o menos answer for radius, please. She's saying 6.36. So you're taking 20 and you're dividing it by your pi button. She's saying 6.36. Make sure that you're rounding to the hundreds. Yep. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And again, if you're calculating on your calculator and you're getting something slightly different, maybe 6.35 or 6.37, as long as you tell me which value of pi you used, I'm happy and you get credit. Okay? Fair enough? I'm going to leave number four for you to do on your own. So let's move to the next section. Find the exact circumference. That means that for this section, no decimals allowed. You're not allowed to put into your calculator 3.14 where you see a pi, and you're not allowed to use the pi button. Your answers must look like these and have the symbol pi still in it somewhere. 
find the exact circumference of each circle using the given inscribed or circumscribed polyp. Let's figure out what those words mean, okay? Because I'm already confused. Are you confused? I'm confused. Okay. Inscribed. The word inscribed means drawn inside. And it's got to be touching. But drawn inside. The word circumscribed means drawn outside. If I look at number six, the triangle is drawn inside the circle. The triangle is inscribed to the circle. The circle is drawn outside the triangle. The circle is circumscribed to the triangle. Okay, did you hear the order of how that happens? And notice these shapes are touching each other. Okay. Looking at the triangle. What kind of triangle is it? Right. It's a right triangle. What do we know about right triangles? They have a 90 degree angle, which tells us where our what is. Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Where is the hypotenuse? Across from the, right angle. Across from the right angle, which means it's that segment right there, which is also a diameter. Okay, so this is the hypotenuse of the triangle, and it's the diameter of the circle. That one line is two different things at the same time. It's special. Now we know this is a right triangle. What do we know about this right triangle? This leg measures how much? How did much does this leg measure? Nine inches. Hmm. Nine and nine. Does this look like one of our special right triangles? No. Let's review our special right triangles real quick. We had our 45, 45, 90, which had these two angles congruent and these two legs congruent. And we had our 30, 60, 90 right triangle where the legs weren't congruent. But we knew about the angle measures. If I look at the triangle I was given, is it one of these two special right triangles? Yes. Yeah, it looks like it's this one. Now, what's cool about this special right triangle, gentlemen, is that it saves me from having to do the Pythagorean theorem. Because in this special right triangle, I have a special setup. The leg measure, which I'm going to call x, because I don't know what it is, gives me the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is whatever my leg measure is, times the square root of 2. You remember doing that? All right. So if this leg is 9, what would be my hypotenuse? 9 square root of 2. Which I don't need to try to mul actually multiply. Don't give me decimals because I want the exact answer. So I'm going to leave it with the square root in there. All right, time to get the circumference. Do you want to have information about diameter or radius? Yes. The diameter, it's okay. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> yes, I have information about one of those. Good job. I have information about the diameter, which means I'm going to use this formula. Just because I have information for it. Not for any other reason. All right, I'm going to replace the D with the measure of the diameter. And I'm done. Except that that looks really weird, doesn't it? Yeah. One, it looks weird because we've got a pi and we've got a square root. Yes. But the comment section is going to hate me if I leave it written like this because the mathematicians out there 
want it written with all the numbery looking numbers in the front and all the letter symbol looking numbers in the back. And so this is the more beautiful version of the correct answer. What's the difference? Absolutely none. Just that this looks prettier and this is how people want to see it. Really, there's no, they're exactly the same thing. Okay? And I will get less hate for my comment section if I leave it looking like that. So let's, let's keep the love in my comment section, shall we? All right. Do you feel that you could do five or seven? You may have to go to the Pythagorean theorem. Do y'all remember the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What she said. Write it down. That's what, write it down. Do you think you could use the Pythagorean theorem on these triangles? Okay, good. So do y'all need me to walk through number seven or are you feeling comfortable? I've got one request to walk through it. I've got a second request. Okay, we'll walk through real quick. If you're feeling comfortable that you don't need it, start poking around at one of the others, okay? Or finishing this one, whichever. All right, where's my hypotenuse? This one? Okay. What kind of shape do I have inscribed to the circle, drawn inside of the circle? Rectangle, which means this side is congruent to this side, and this side must be three, which means if I look at this right triangle right here, this is my hypotenuse, which we are using the lowercase c for in the Pythagorean theorem. This is not the uppercase c of circumference, okay? It's lowercase c hypotenuse. The other two sides are a and b, and no one cares what order you put them in. squaring those numbers, and then I'm adding 49, I'm really bad with my double digit additions fast, like calculator or adding on my fingers. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I have to get rid of the square power. How do I get rid of square power? You do that. What does that hand motion mean? Take the square root. That's what you meant, right? Yeah, yeah you're like, totally. Yeah, of course. That's totally what I meant. Do not put this in the calculator. I've been asked for the exact number. If I put this in the calculator and get a decimal, it's no longer exact. You made it más o menos. Sort of, kind of. Not really. So you got to leave it like this. But I have to make sure that this is the simplest radical I can make it. So I've got to see if I can simplify this a little bit. I'm going to find factors of 58. And I'm looking for pairs in the factors. 58 is an even number, so I'm going to divide it by 2. 58 divided by 2 is? You're not wrong. What was it? 29. Okay. 29, can I divide 29 by anything? Yeah, no, it's not even, so I can't divide it by 2 or any of the other evens. It's not divisible by 3, because dividing by 3 goes 27 and then 30, which skips 29 completely. Can't divide it by 5, because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. Notice I skipped 4 and I skipped 6. I can't divide it by 7. And you know what, at this point, I've pretty much gone through most of the ones that would probably appear. Nope. So this is as far as I can go. That is the value of the hypotenuse. But the hypotenuse is also what segment in the circle? It's the diameter, which means I can use circumference equals pi diameter again. I'm going to replace the diameter with the value I just calculated. And then I'm going to make my comment section happy.
And that's my final answer because I was asked to make it exact. I know you can do number five now. I have faith in you. It's gonna be exactly like number seven. Let's look at number eight. Does that worry you? A little bit? Okay. This thing's a square, yes? Which means this is 11 and it stays 11 the whole way across. If I were to slide this around, yes? Which means what would be the measurement right here at that diameter? I now have a diameter, yes? Which formula can I use for circumference that has diameter? Pi times diameter. Pi times diameter. I know the diameter is 11. And now I'm going to keep my comment section from hating me. I'm done. Too easy, too easy. That's it, that's all I have for you today. I'm gonna challenge you for number nine, talking about a circular cake, and you're welcome to change the name from Kathy to Carranza, because we all know what I did to my birthday cake. I bisected it, remember? And then I tried to eat half of it, and I got sick, because it was a lot of cake. And it was a circular cake, just like in this word problem. So you can think of me and imagining me cutting my circular birthday cake. All right, that's all I had. Say bye, everyone. Bye. I'm just waiting for one of you guys to go bye, everyone. Bye. bye. <laughs> there you go.